relatives, just do it. You don't want any other influences out, any other individuals to influence you one way or the other out there. Because after all, you're doing it for yourself. You're not doing it for them. You know, they're you're the you're going to be the one doing the work, not them. So why listen to what they have to say if it's benefiting you? Seek instead the advice of someone who's actually done it already or who's actually doing it for positive influence or positive feedback that will help you along the way and not try to stop you. So that's out of the way. So what do you do next? You have the, you've interviewed for a couple companies. You, you have an idea of what it costs, right? Now what you do is you implement some of those things that they talked about. For instance, you might have a help desk job you interviewed for and they say you need to know Active Directory. So what you do is you create a YouTube channel or video and you talk about Active Directory or you create your own podcast you talk about Active Directory and what it is, what it's like, talk about your experience if you have any. And you want to create content based on that. So why do you do this? What's the reason? What, why, do you, why do you want to do this? Why am I telling you to do this? So you need this because you need to separate yourself from your competition. Let's assume in your class, your college class or whatnot, right? There's 100 folks, 100 people. So out of the 100 people, how many of those individuals have a, second, have a job while going to, to college? We don't know. But you would know. How many of those individuals out of 100 probably have an advantage that you don't have, such as maybe their relatives are a little better off than you are, so they have all the technology, they have the unlimited, they have the extra time that you don't have, perhaps, because they can do extra things. They have all the um, computer gadgets to, to, to do these type of things. So you have to work a little, a little extra. You have to separate yourself from those type of individuals. Um, out of 100 folks... There are probably, out of those 100 people, you, you can probably figure out in your head what is your competition for getting, let's say, the United States. Let's say, so what you do is you pretend as if like 100 people, all of your class, there is um, there's a possibility to go to the States, let's just say, to get a job. And they're going to only t- take five people, you know, five of the people there. You know, and they're going to, okay, so now you say, out of the hundred, who who are those five individuals that I need to compete with? You know, how can I compete with them? And then ask yourself, well, what what do they know? What do they what do, how what market or what value do they add to the market that I could actually add as well, or I could be better than basically, right? That's what you're asking yourself. For instance, you know, a YouTube channel. That's first things first, right there. Um, not a lot of people. And IT actually have YouTube channels. You would think they do, but they don't. There's not a lot of, relative to the number of YouTube channels, there's not a lot of people that have IT um, IT channels or in their own field, basically. So that's that. Second thing is create content. Create a website. Create something of value. Create a course. Create an ebook. What you're after is you're after telling the world that you have content. You're You're... You're adding value to the marketplace, basically. That's the whole point here. So that's out of the way. So duplicate that process with countries like Canada, countries like Australia, countries like New Zealand. And uh, so I'll tell you a little little thing about this, right? In your country, wherever you are, you would think that it's easier or harder, right, to get a job. But I would submit to you it's probably easier than it is. There's less competition in your country than there is in the States. So why do I say that? In the States, there's knowledge everywhere. Everywhere there's knowledge. Everywhere you can go, people are trying to give you knowledge or help you out or give you something to make you better. I'd submit to you, but it's probably not like that, where a lot of people, other people live. And that's what the culture is like here, actually. So, for instance, you go somewhere and you just have to, like, ask somebody how to do something. Then they're probably going to show you how to do it. 
or they're probably going to give you advice, free advice everywhere, right? They don't, they don't have like a hang up to where they won't give you information. They just, they want everybody to be um, successful. You know, they want everybody, they want to share their knowledge. They want to help people. Right. And it's been my experience. It's not always like that in other places because of course, you know, they're trying to get, um, get their, their money. They're trying to get their, uh, their benefit as well, you know, before they help other folks, because, you know, there's, it's kind of a, like um, a bit of like a, a, a lack, not a lack, but it's like, I need to get mine before I help you, basically. Versus the States, it's like, okay, we'll just help you out, you know, help you out, help everybody out. So that's one aspect of it, right? So the other aspect of it is when you're here, everything, it costs money in the States. Um, you know, you may... You may um, be from a, your culture may be around a lot of people. And it may be like you want to be around that type of individual, whoever those those people are, your countrymen are basically, right? When you come to the States, people don't look at you like your nationality. They know maybe you're from a certain area based on how you speak or whatever. But they're just going to believe that you're American. They're not going to think of you as any other type of nationality. Um, and when you come here, it's a bit of a culture shock. I, I imagine to, to folks who come here for the first time because, um, people just expect that you, uh, if, if they expect, they think of you as they look at you and say, Oh, you're American or you're from, yeah, maybe you were born in somewhere else, but now you're American. So maybe you, you think like us basically, right? Which is not always the case. And so they, what happens is they expect you to know certain things. For instance, in an interview, that's a prime, prime example. When someone in the state says, yes, or we'll take care of it, right? Usually it means like 90 whatever percent, it usually means, yeah, I want to take care of it. It's not always like that in other countries. Usually, you know, sometimes a yes, maybe, maybe, maybe a maybe, or okay, I'll think about it doesn't always mean a definite yes so when that's the thing when you come here that's probably a hurdle you're going to run into um the different interview and job search strategies that work on this podcast i want to talk about um something i've really don't talk a lot about actually and i i know a lot of people who listen to this podcast don't live in the united states they're not uh, they don't live here. They're not from here, United States. So I want to talk to you individuals out there who are not in the United States and who maybe are going to college now or who are in high school or, or you know, are about to go to college. And I will say that it, it's not a perfect system and that – let me start off by saying this. In order to come to the United States as an H-1B – the likelihood is that you need a, a degree, you need a four-year degree, if you're not from the United States, which that's just how it is, right? That's the likelihood is. That's just the rules are like that, right? Uh, but if you live in the United States, of course, you don't need a degree to get a job. That's just other countries. And I. that's just how it's been, I think, for however many years. And um, it's unfortunate that some other countries out there you need a four year degree just to get like a basic job, you know, basic, um, you know, job paying, you know, minimum wage, basically you need a degree to, to get that. So having said all that and an understanding of whatever your dilemma is, whatever country you have. So that's out of the way. Now let's talk about how, how you can come here in the United States or, or a country like it. How can you, can use it to your advantage. Um, so let's talk about that. So start off by you, you're in high school or you're in, co in college. Let's say you're in college. You just started college and you're in your first couple of months of college and you want to say, well, how do I get, what do I need to do? So what you do is you create a resume, not a um, CV. So the British have like a CV and the, in the States, we use resumes. 
So the, what's the difference, right? For those who don't know, the CV, you'll have like your picture, your uh, date of birth. It'll have like your religion. It'll have like your nationality, your um, passport number, your height, your weight, all that information on there. And the U S we don't use that. We just use the resume. So the resume is basically just name, uh, address, phone number, email address, and then like where you've worked, your objective, and then the places you've worked, your education, your certifications. So what you want to do is you want to gear your resume. You want to gear your, you want to gear it towards the United States or resume. So basically here's, here's the strategy. Put on there your, your date, your name. I'm sorry, your, your name, your email address, and you want to put a stateside phone number. So how do you get that? Google Talk. You can get a free number uh, from Google. Like Google Talk will give you a free number. Uh, that's what you want. That's what you're after. It's because when you talk to a person in the States, they don't have to know that you're not in the States. And you're not after, what you're after is you're after the interview. That's your whole purpose here. And so you put in your resume, your objective, you put on like your uh, degree you're getting, you know, whatever that degree is, and you put as if you have it. So you're just putting, instead of the year, you put like continuing education and put the current year. So whatever the year is, space, continue education or continue education um, and or expected, you know, a certain year. And then that'll enable you to talk about it. So that's that's out of the way. So you first thing is first have a resume out there. You gotta have a resume that's geared towards what they accept in the United States, with an address, or maybe just a just a name, an email address, and a stateside number. Once you have that, start applying to every single job you can in the United States, because what you're after is you're after the interview. That's the whole point here. You want to get as many interviews as possible. And I would say in in, in, the, in the first month, try to get at least two interviews. Apply as many times as possible. Take about four. Uh, so in, in a week's time, block out three blocks of tw- uh, four hours. So you have segments of, of four-hour windows or three-hour windows. So fine in a week's time. Uh, Three, four-hour blocks of windows. Time. So, you know, today you have four hours. Thursday you have four hours. Or or four um, four blocks of three-hour time, meaning like, you know, Monday you have a block of three hours. So take that time each week to dedicate on looking for jobs and job growth and resumes and whatnot, doing all that. Doing the interview, going in as many as interviews as possible, write down the information that they tell you on the interviews. What you're after is you're after the knowledge. What are they teaching me? What what do I not know? What do I need to know for my, my future job, basically? Make a list of that. You know. Find out the the price, or rather the salary that they're gonna pay, so you kind of have an idea. Calculate that. Figure it out. Go on. And the second thing to do after you know that or after you're doing that is to go on that city and then to find out what the cost of an apartment is, what the cost of a car or the tra- public transportation, food. Uh, find out as much information as possible about that about that area. Because Mike's, they're probably going to ask you um, some information about... Where are you from? Um, you know, what do you know about the area, basically? And if you know a lot about the area, you're going to, that's like side, that's chit chat that you can talk on, you can talk about, basically. What it does for you is it helps you to understand the salary in that area for that particular job. Let's just say IT, let's say help desk, right? Let's just call it help desk. So it helps you to understand what what are the jobs paying for help desk, say in California, say in Silicon Valley, let's say Santa Clara, right? Okay, you understand that, how much they make per hour in Santa Clara. Then you understand what's the food like. Then you understand 
what um, what are the housing costs like? So you want to understand all that information um, after you know during your interview process as well, so you have as much information as possible. So that way, when it comes time to maybe accept an offer, even though you live in the other country, you can know what you're worth or what what you can expect to get paid. And then, so if they say like ten dollars an hour, you can know. Well, that's not enough money for for that area, so I won't be able to take it. So during this time, I would say that don't tell anybody they're doing this, your friends or relatives. Okay, so thanks everybody for listening to this podcast and have a great day.